All right, that should be good. So this is life hacks to improve your practice, leveraging technology in 2021. My disclosures are that I am in a small private practice, although I've tried to keep these comments uh, somewhat generic as they would apply to many practices. I advocate for automation technology when appropriate. I do consider myself a little bit more tech savvy than average, and that is my bias. And I am the founder and owner of Surge Survey, which I will be mentioning. So the fact is, it's hard to run a great practice. It doesn't matter what kind of practice you have, what model it is, it's very challenging. We have less time, lower reimbursement, more paperwork, and increased patient demands these days than we've ever had in the past. And this applies to every employment model, whether or not you are the ultimate decision maker, this affects all of us. In my opinion, one of the greatest benefits of the COA is that we can learn from each other because nobody is alone in being an orthopedic surgeon in California or in your particular practice model. If I've learned anything from meeting people at the COA, it's that no matter how unique you think your circumstances are, they're not as unique as you think they are. And the COA has actually made an effort to collect some of these hacks or basically tips and tricks. And they put together a one minute practice efficiencies white paper last year. And that's available if anyone's interested. A lot of these notes were taken from that and a few things that I've expanded upon just from my own experience. But those notes really focused on these different categories, kind of back office and patient registration functions, patient visits and exams, billing and coding tips, patient communication and follow-up, and marketing and outreach. So here are some of the things that I found to be really useful and that others have mentioned. Google Suite, which you know as Gmail or Google Calendar or Google Docs and Google Sheets, there's actually a HIPAA compliant version and it's called Google Suite. It's extremely affordable at only $12 per month per user, which means in a small practice, you might only need a few users and for under $100 a month, you have an unbelievable resource at your fingertips. It's HIPAA compliant and Google will have a signed BAA, which is required for HIPAA. And that gives you HIPAA compliant versions of email, email templates, for example, we have templates that my front desk registration will send a new patient that gives them information about their visit, some information about how to find our practice, links to their forms to complete in advance, and a reminder to bring in a CD if they have any imaging. It saves a lot of time. You have access to spreadsheets and accounting. We use the spreadsheets on a daily basis for basically a lot of our accounting, calculating our month end. You, I used it for my board collections because it's a HIPAA compliant way I could do that. And because it's all in the cloud, I could access it from the hospital or from my office. We have our staff do their timesheets. You can create digital forms and it serves as Google Drive, which is basically a HIPAA compliant cloud-based archive where you can keep files. What's nice is that you can share these documents among staff. So in a small practice like mine, this has been extremely affordable and effective. Never neglect your office website. These days, I don't think it's good enough just to have a website. You really wanna keep it updated and keep it modern. Sometimes that's just an aesthetic update. Sometimes it's important to focus on newer features, making sure your forms are digital and that they look good that patients can complete them digitally, even if not through your website, at least they can type in answers. A lot of people that are younger especially don't like to do a lot of writing. Consider adding online bill pay if you don't already have that on your website or click to book an appointment. There are a lot of companies that can help you with that. Viewing images, I remember this was a thorn in my side until I discovered Radiant. Basically patients come in with CDs and they can come from a variety of different hospitals and different systems. And most of the CDs have their own DICOM viewer. And my computer was very slow to load that software. So all of my computers, I downloaded a system called Radiant. It's free software. Technically it's trial version, but the trial just keeps renewing. 
And when you put a CD in, it loads up the images in 30 seconds. It's always the same system, so I know how to use it. It pulls up X-rays, CTs, MRIs with no problem at all. And then if there's an image that I like, it's very easy to export it and save it onto my EMR. So I would highly recommend this. There are a number of patient communication apps. I think nowadays everyone is familiar with Zoom. FaceTime is permitted. Doximity is an app that has what they call the Doximity Dialer, which hides your phone number but allows you to call your patients. And they now have a video feature as well. There are also more involved patient engagement tools. A lot of companies that will help follow up with your patients after a visit or after surgery, help you manage any issues or potential complications or triage concerns. And then the last topic I'll mention is marketing and online reputation. The bottom line is that anything is better than nothing. In 2021, if you don't have an online presence, you're losing patients whether you know it or not. Patients Google you every single day and your online reputation matters. It's basically an extension of your physical building. COVID certainly hasn't helped matters because volumes, generally speaking, are down. It's really important that you encourage reviews from patients. If you don't encourage reviews, the angry, upset, and frustrated patients are going to leave bad reviews and you will have nothing to counteract them. I've done a number of studies looking at the most effective way to encourage positive reviews, and all the data shows that automated emails work best. When you do this and you do it well, we can see a 60% increase in referrals in two weeks. It almost sounds too good to be true, but it's really true. There are numerous companies to choose from. Surge Survey is actually a company that I started because I had a personal need in my small practice to increase five-star reviews, and I had trouble finding one that really worked for me. I've done a number of research studies on the topic, and I've actually shown a one-to-one -one correlation at 96% and 97%, demonstrating that patient referrals and online reviews are directly correlated. And that's true both for young surgeons and older, more established surgeons. And as I referenced, automation accelerates referrals. This is actually a chart showing the number of reviews my practice has in my entire practice life, which is about five years. And what you can see is early on, we did nothing to generate reviews and we got no reviews. And then I handed out cards and I asked patients to leave a review and it worked fairly well. I did that for about a year. Then I started automating it with emails. And you can see that the rate of reviews accumulated significantly more from month 16 to 22. I almost didn't believe it. So then I stopped the automation and went back to handing out cards. And naturally, the collection rate slowed down again. So of course, I wanted more reviews. So I turned the automation back on. I did that for another year and a half. Then COVID hit. And during COVID, we didn't do the automation because we had patients enrolling themselves via an iPad. And then after COVID kind of started to slow down and I realized I had a problem, I came up with a new way of emailing my existing patients, which I called a bolus review because I basically emailed all my patients at once asking for a review. And you can see the dramatic increase in the number of reviews basically got me back to my same line to the point where those reviews I would have had continued. And it's important to remember that having a good online reputation is more than just about volume and referrals. It helps build patient trust. When a patient is sitting in your waiting room, waiting to see you, they're already your patient, they are going to Google you. It's just natural human curiosity to wanna to know who it is you're going to see. And when they see a lot of positive reviews, they're gonna be really excited to walk into your office, as opposed to reading one or two negative reviews, which makes them raise an eyebrow and really wonder what's going on and what do they need to expect. It also reduces surgeon anxiety. We all have angry patients. It's not always our fault. Sometimes it's an insurance issue. Maybe it's an authorization problem. Maybe the patient didn't get along with the front desk. We all have angry patients, but you don't have to worry that they're gonna leave a review and that it's going to harm your reputation because when you have 100 five-star reviews, one negative one really doesn't make an impact. 
and it increases your practice visibility. Even patients who are already coming to see you, often they need your phone number, they need your address, and they're simply gonna Google your name or your practice. And it's good to have good reviews, it helps. In summary, I don't think it's ever been easier to automate your practice. If you can't do it yourself, hire a college student. Don't be afraid. The biggest barrier is you and your comfort level. And you can always ask your colleagues and partners for help. We are going to go into the breakout session where I would really encourage any of you who have questions and want to talk about this to join uh, my room. And we're going to get more into specifics. I'll get to that in one second. I'd like to kind of conclude the group portion of the COA meeting for 2021. I really want to thank you all for coming. This has been a challenging year, of course, and there's no question that we would prefer to be in person right now. But thankfully, we're already planning next year's in-person meeting. And the fact that you were able to log in and stay logged in for this virtual meeting really means a lot to all of us. Don't forget to do your daily evaluations. Those are required for your CME. You have 30 days to complete them. And I'm gonna put a huge plug for next year's meeting, COA 2022. The dates are already set, April 7th to 10th at the Hyatt Regency in Indian Wells. Hotel reservations with a significant discount are already being accepted. I just Googled the hotel. It looks amazing. They have two giant water slides. I'm already looking at bringing my whole family and I hope you can too. And don't forget, tell your colleagues, tell your friends, tell your residents and fellows about the COA. It's tough out there. The COA does unbelievable advocacy work that probably more than you are even aware of. And obviously I'm preaching to the choir because you're already logged in and participating, but be sure to let your colleagues know how valuable the COA is. At this point, I would really like you to go back to the virtual meeting and you'll be able to select the breakout sessions. There are two sessions. Dr. Anderson is hosting one on COVID-19 and how it affected your practice. And I will extend this talk with a discussion about uh, specifics in terms of practice automation and efficiencies. I did have one question I can address quickly, but we can talk more in the breakout. What do I say in the email and how do I word it? And um, why don't we talk about that in the breakout sessions? Again, thank you all so much for attending the meeting. Looking forward to seeing you in person next year.